Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. It is my distinct pleasure today to be visiting with Roy Snell, the CEO of the Society of Co Corporate Compliance and Ethics, SCCE. We just, uh, uh, or Roy just ended the 12th, um, excuse me, the 2013 SCCE Compliance and Ethics Institute in Washington. It was a fabulous conference, uh, lots of great information, uh, speakers, uh, camaraderie, uh, and uh, just a great event. So one of the things, though, that uh, came up for me at the event that I asked Roy if I could follow up on with him uh, led to this podcast, and that's the issue of the development of a compliance professional. Uh, Roy and the SCCE have been very instrumental in uh, working towards professionalism in the uh, compliance practice, but I wanted to move to the question of how does one actually develop the skills necessary to become a compliance professional and then uh, continue that development going forward. Uh, I started out, uh, as many in this area uh, did, as a lawyer who was thrown into the deep end of uh, compliance and told uh, good luck. Uh, and uh, I think, though, as our uh, industry matures, we need to move a little bit past that. So with that somewhat long-winded introduction, uh, Roy, if I could ask you, uh, could you give us some, uh, some of your thoughts on how one develops uh, as a compliance professional and perhaps the SCCE role in that? Well, uh, it, it has been interesting. It isn't often we get to witness the um, evolution of a, a new profession. And a lot of the professions that we're very familiar with have been around for years. Um, some professions come on gradually and are needed gradually. This profession has come on very abruptly. It is needed very badly and it is a very difficult profession. So I think that the challenges associated with the fact that this profession is quite young are exacerbated by all those factors. Um, fortunately for us, we have had um, a great deal of very talented people such as yourself coming from uh, similar fields to uh, help this profession. Um, people have come from risk, audit, legal, HR, uh, general administration jobs and business and um, so we've gotten um, a lot of great talent in, in that way. Um, the, the problem is, though, that as simple as the concept of a compliance program and the role of a compliance officer is, it's still um, very challenging because it requires a very different mindset and essentially we're fixing problems that could not be fixed in the past and and um, it's it's the it's it's a lot of uh, of skill that's hard to describe that's required to get this job done, and that's kind of where SCCE uh, is trying to help. Um, we have uh, 70 compliance conferences a year. We have audio conferences. Uh, we're trying to pair people up uh, to uh, network. Uh, and share ideas and stories and, and get help. We also do a lot in the area of connecting people, mentors and mentees. Um, it's a long, slow slog to get from where we are to a mature profession. Uh, the other thing that's happening is, is there's uh, 10 or 12 schools around the country that have put together uh, fairly uh, extensive compliance degrees of one sort or another and uh, as is expected the education is coming along um, but uh, it's slow because the profession is quite new. Um, well you mentioned several things in there I'd like uh, to perhaps follow up with and I should preface my question with uh, the following I was recently at uh, Michigan State University uh, to visit with 
the director of my graduate program. I have a graduate degree in uh, what's now called human relations and labor relations. And in discussing the compliance profession with him, it was clear to me that many of the functions uh, in compliance overlap with uh, some of the functions that traditionally are viewed in HR. So for instance, uh, incentive plans, evaluation of employees, interviewing of employees, uh, responding to hotline calls, training are all things that uh, traditionally have been viewed as uh, certainly within the province of HR. How can uh, a lawyer or someone new to the compliance profession begin to get the training and the different skills that I uh, dawned on me when I was talking to the head of the uh, Michigan State Graduate Program, but also some of the areas that you mentioned, risk, audit, finance, other disciplines that are outside just traditional legal disciplines? Um, there are um, courses in higher education that uh, people could take. Uh, there are also many great workshops that are provided uh, to help people understand the intricacies of audit, uh, legal risk. Um, we have an, uh, an academy that we do uh, quite a number of every year um, that touches on all these sorts of things, but its, its primary function is to help you understand the role of a compliance officer and the function of a compliance program. If, if individuals want to understand even, even some of the great skill sets that HR brings to the table, risk, audit, legal, it, it, my suggestion would be if they can't get back to, into a higher education or a school setting, that I would uh, consider trying to find these um, workshops uh, that are available through a number of different organizations that you can go spend a week, uh, four days in intensive exposure to the, the things there. And, and one other thing that you know uh, very well, uh, Tom, is that there are uh, a great number of blogs uh, such as yours, social media websites, LinkedIn groups, uh, that focus on each of these areas. We, we have uh, some of them. Um, I, I would consider trying to hang out with the community that you're most interested in learning from, again, whether it's HR, legal, audit, risk, et cetera. Go find their groups, uh, usually, particularly on LinkedIn, they're open. You can follow the discussion, ask questions, get a lot of documents, links to websites. Uh, I'll tell you another one that I've been really surprised by. I, I signed up for Twitter uh, five years ago or so and tweeted about three times in the first four and a half years and then finally decided to get more involved. And I've discovered that it isn't really about um, getting the most followers or, or even tweeting. It is a tremendous search engine. If you type in uh, words like audit, legal, risk, HR, basically what people are doing out there is trying to provide as much news as possible to people on Twitter to increase the number of followers they have. And they'll post 100 uh, characters of what an article is about and then a link to that article. I think Twitter is a tremendous search engine for subspecialty business uh, information. You know, I'm with you 110% on Twitter. I'm a huge fan of Twitter. Uh, we could probably do an entire uh, episode, uh, if not on Twitter, certainly on social media. But there's a couple of things that uh, you said in there that I'd like to follow up on. Uh, the first one is, uh, I think it would be really helpful if uh, the listeners understood a little bit more about the SCCE academies. Because the academies, uh, at least from my perspective, they're not designed to give you a deep dive into each of the disciplines, but to provide you with a general understanding of the various disciplines that need to go in uh, to a compliance professional. Could, could you tell us a little bit about the academies? Sure. If, if there was one thing I could try and help people understand is uh, the core benefit of, of attending. And it's not necessarily what, what you might think on first blush. Everybody comes to the academy with a pretty good understanding of, of some of the elements of a compliance program. 
What they don't have as great an understanding of is how all those elements are intertwined and work together in the role of the compliance officer managing that compliance program. So what we often find is people from audit legal risk, HR administration or whatever, coming in and thinking they had all the pieces connected, but didn't. It, 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 and and they, they're, those that, that I've talked to have been pretty grateful about the idea of being able to put in perspective the role of the compliance officer and the function of the compliance program, and that they now have this strong base to work from, uh, to work in the other subspecialty areas, uh, audit, legal, and risk, uh, investigations, and these sorts of things. And um, so if, if, uh, if I could, uh, the, the, the biggest point I would like to get across is that it helps people get a starting point. Maybe, maybe the way to describe it is, is that for the last 20 years at least, uh, the corporate America business in this country has lost its reputation. It, it's the press, the public, the politicians, the prosecutors are furious. And, and, and they're furious because something was missing. And the thing that's missing is, is uh, hard to describe, but if you go to an academy, uh, it, is, it is very clear to most people who come out, how is this different, the compliance and ethics profession, from all those professions that came before it? That's, that's the biggest thing that uh, people walk away from a real sense of now I get it now I see where we fit in now I understand our role and uh, I, I think it brings a great deal of comfort to a lot of people who have very difficult jobs uh, let me explore one thing you said in there uh, as you know I come to compliance from a legal perspective so I tend to view things through the prism of what are the regulations what are the rules what I need to write down on paper but you just said compliance and ethics and I think certainly myself, but many other lawyers forget that it's really compliance and ethics. Could you speak a little bit to the development of the ethical side of compliance and ethics? Yeah, I, I, this, is, this is just one of my favorite recent uh, uh, questions that I've been getting. Uh, I think um, I might be able to help people understand the difference here. Um, if you look at the definition of ethics in the dictionary, it says a set of uh, rules or expectations. There isn't a list of what is ethical in the dictionary, and there can't be, because the definition of ethics can change depending on where you are. And, and frankly, what I'm seeing quite a bit of on these LinkedIn groups is discussion about what is ethical with regard to society. And frankly, I think it's quite debatable whether or not we can say if you agree with me politically or don't that you're ethical or you're not. Um, a, a better example of, of the drift is, is uh, that I see in the world of ethics, the confusion, the dilution that's occurring that we're trying to, to focus on is what I call kind of save the world ethics, you know. what. Yeah, a lot of important causes, don't get me wrong, we need more trees and we need to worry about the environment and we need to worry about the health of people all across the world. But what people need to understand when you take this job, all that other stuff is important, but a compliance and ethics officer focuses on business ethics. And business ethics to me is more along the lines of, of uh, following the rule of law uh, treating uh, people uh, fairly, not not uh, lying in the workplace and these sorts of things. Their workplace ethics, and we try to get people both at the academy and all of our other conferences when we talk about ethics to get them to think about business ethics, because once people expand it out to social ethics, or as I call it, save the world ethics. It, it, it becomes so diluted that it's very difficult for a compliance office, officer to solve all those problems, and frankly, it's not in their job description. So, so that would probably be the biggest piece of advice that I'd have for everyone is make sure that you stay focused on the ethics that's associated with preventing, finding, and fixing ethical and regulatory business problems. That's a great point. 
Now if I could turn to uh, one thing you touched on uh, when we started to visit, and that's on mentoring. Uh, could you describe for us your views on the importance of mentoring and then some of the things that SCCE does to try to help the mentoring process for compliance professionals? Well, I think by, by, by default, we accidentally connect people that end up mentoring and, and being mentored. Uh, we 70 conferences a year, the, the LinkedIn groups, uh, the, our own social media, SCCE net, uh, even Twitter maybe. Um, we have uh, connected a lot of people who have uh, helped each other out. Um, with regard to formal mentoring, there's some real problems with formal mentoring efforts that have occurred in professional associations uh, since people tried to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. It's very difficult to pluck one person out of the, the, the whole mix. We have, together with HCCA, uh, we now have 13,000 members. Um, plucking one person out of there as a mentee and another as a mentor uh, and saying, here you go, have at it, is extraordinarily difficult. It is, it, it, they, have to, they have to be in relatively similar fields, they have to have relatively s similar interests, they have to have an appropriate gap between the knowledge of the mentor and the mentee, but most of all they have to have a click, uh, they have to connect uh, personally. And that's extremely hard to do. So what we did was, uh, <clears throat> was set up something like speed dating. When I first heard of this, I, I got to tell you, I was, I was very reluctant to pursue it. But once I saw how it worked, it was genius. And what we do is, is uh, at our annual meetings, we have people sign up to be mentors, have people to sign up to be mentees, and they go in a room and sit across from each other at a table for 15 to 20 minutes, and they meet five or six people in an hour and a half period. And they swap business cards and stories and connect or they don't connect. And we have increased uh, the ability for people to find someone that they connect with on all different levels by about sixfold. And uh, frankly, the very next year you can do it again if, if, if you need to. But I, I think it's the only practical way to, to make these sorts of things happen. Uh, Roy, we're getting uh, near the end of our time. And I would like to uh, maybe end with um, a story you told me when we were preparing for this uh, interview. And I believe it was about an um, uh, Army veteran or at least a military veteran who uh, was relatively new to the profession yet was able to make uh, a series of connections through the SCCE and that's led to uh, perhaps a job offer or two. So could you tell well, us about that process? I have, uh, it came from a very interesting uh, ex connection to begin with. There, there's a, uh, a, a VP of, of uh, communications at a very large company and we've always believed at SCCE that we have a very big tent and that we invited him to moderate a panel about how compliance officers could better communicate the tone at the top throughout the organization was very beneficial. Through him meeting me, he was a part of the Wounded Warrior uh, uh, project, and he asked me to be a mentor. And I uh, uh, got paired up with uh, an individual who uh, I told my board about, and they immediately said, let's all help and uh, let's have him come to one of our academies and sit for the exam. He, through his uh, dozen or so years in, in the uh, military, uh, had a lot of experience in investigations and regulations and other areas, but just didn't have the whole picture. So the academy was perfect. He took the test to our delight. He passed it. He also, uh, we, uh, we brought him to our annual meeting. In the process of all that, he got two uh, job offers. Now, I don't, I can't say that we had direct impact on these job offers, but what he did tell me was that of the two job offers, he knew immediately which one to take based on hanging out with our community and that, that, that he picked the one that would, would, would lead him uh, down the road to uh, having 
uh, more opportunities in, in this profession. So it was uh, a, a big fun uh, to work on that. And uh, my hope is uh, that uh, he and I will stay connected and that I'll help him through this transition of working in the military to working in the, in the business world, which has obviously a little different twist on it. Uh, Roy, we're at the, uh, the end of our time. Uh, this has been a fabulous and fascinating conversation for me. Believe me, I've learned a lot. Uh, but I would ask if uh, any of our listeners uh, wanted more information about the SCCE Academies, uh, could you tell us where they might go? Yeah, uh, we have all that information on our main website, corporatecompliance.org. Uh, it's all one word, corporatecompliance.org, uh, and uh, you'll see in the tabs there the conferences and underneath that the, the academies, and uh, they can check out all the other gatherings we have uh, throughout the course of the year. Great. Well, thanks a lot, and I look forward to our next visit. Thank you very much, Tom. It was a pleasure.